Hello everybody, it's Sarah and since it is now already July, the time has come to talk about my most anticipated releases for the second half of 2022. And also, in case you can hear it, there's someone playing classical music, so yeah, you might hear that in the background. But anyway, time to talk about my most anticipated releases of 2022. I have a total of like 20-ish books, like just under 20 books, that I am really excited to get to in the second half of 2022. Not like I got to most of my most anticipated releases for the first half, but anyway, we're not talking about that. And as always, I put these on the list at the end of 2021. I have since then forgotten what most of these books are about. So yeah, I will try and look it up again. I probably won't tell you what each book is about, but I will try and tell you a little bit about why I put it on my list or, you know, what got me interested in this book and also try and tell you what the genre is of each book. And so with all of that said, let's get started. Also, I did just notice that apparently some of the books I'm going to talk about have kind of already been published, just not in the editions that I wrote down apparently. So I guess it's going to be some cases of where the US and the UK have different publication dates. I will still mention all of them, but you know, if some of them technically have already been published, I will also mention that and then just mention when the edition that I wrote down is going to be published. So the first book I have here is Her Majesty's Royal Coven by Juno Dawson. This has apparently technically been published already in May, but there's also an edition being published on July 21st, which is the date that I wrote down. This one is one of those books where I'm not really sure anymore <laughs> why I put it down. I mean, I can see why I put it down because apparently it's historical fantasy, there's gender discussions, it's LGBT and so it sounds like a lot of stuff that I'm usually interested in and apparently it's, you know, about witches in the British mm. government or, you know, royal government or something, uh, obviously. <laughs> I mean, the title kind of gives it away. But yeah, so that's the first book. The second book I have is also another book that I think might have already been published and that is Daughters of Sparta by Claire Haywood. The reason why I think this has already been published is because a friend of mine actually already got her copy, but this also has the publication date that I put down of the 21st of July. Daughters of Sparta, as the name kind of already gives away, is a Greek myth retelling following Helen and Clytemnestra who were sisters married to brothers, obviously, and both play a very central role in the epic surrounding the Trojan War. As you all know, I kind of really, really love Trojan retellings, especially when they put like a female perspective in center. Next, I have the Book of Gothel by Mary McMine, which comes out on the 26th of July. This is another retelling. However, this one is a fairy tale retelling of Rapunzel centering the witches perspective, as far as I know, and I am very excited for this one. <laughs> then next I have The Book Eaters by Sonia Dean on the 2nd of August. This one, first of all, it just has an amazing title, I mean The Book Eaters, and this one is about, literally, as the title suggests once again, about a family who eats books as food. I know not a lot more about it, however, I have heard a lot of really good reviews of this book, so I cannot wait to get to it. Continuing on, on the 9th of August, I have The Art of Prophecy by Wesley Chu. This one is an adult high fantasy. I don't know any more about that. I believe it's gonna be Eastern Asian inspired, and I just absolutely love the cover. Once again, in this anticipated releases video, you're gonna see a lot of I don't know what this is about, but I love the cover and I want to have it on my bookshelves. Then we have our first sequel for the second half of 2022 that I'm excited for, and that is The Oleander Sword by Tasha Suri, which comes out on the 16th of August. This is the sequel to The Chessmen Throne and the second book in the Burning Kingdoms trilogy. And yeah, this trilogy is a South Asian inspired adult high fantasy. It is sapphic, there's rebellions, there's betrayal, there's love, 
and caring and yeah I did enjoy the first book and I'm very excited to see where the story goes moving onwards. Then I have the book that I am probably the most excited for that isn't a sequel or by an author that I already know and that is The First Binding by R.R. Verdi and this one is also going to be published on the 16th of August. This is also a South Asian inspired adult high fantasy and it's apparently a lot surrounding telling stories, singing, melodies. Once again, I'm not exactly sure what the plot of the book is, but every time I see the author say something about the book on Twitter, I just want to pick it up more and more. So yeah, I'm just very, very excited for this one. Next is another one of my most highly anticipated releases for 2022, and just in general, one of Booktube's most highly anticipated releases for 2022, and that is of course Fable by R.F. Kuang which is supposed to come out on the 23rd of August and this one is I'm not sure if it's high fantasy or historical fantasy but it's definitely inspired by Oxford and it's dark academia and it's decolonial and I know I've not always had the bad time with R.F. Kuang but if she can write this in a way where I enjoy it I believe this is gonna be one of my favorite books of all time and I am legitimately so excited what she does with, you know, what she's told us she's giving us. Next on the 30th of August I have an anticipated release that I technically already talked about in my anticipated releases for the first half of the year but the release has been pushed back so now I will talk about it again and that is Moon Dark Smile by Tessa Gretchen which as I said, comes out on the 30th of August now. This is the sequel to Nightshine, which was a kind of YA high fantasy inspired by Howl's Moving Castle and also, if I remember correctly, some other fairy tales. And Moon Dark Smile is gonna follow one of the main side characters, kind of one of the characters around whom the plot, you know, was in the first book, but who wasn't necessarily the main character. And so yeah, we're gonna follow him in the second book. I'm not exactly sure what the plot is gonna be, but I don't care because I really, really loved Nightshine. Moving on to September and my birthday month, we have Children of Gods and Fighting Man by... Who's it by? Shauna Lawless. I apparently put down the series name as the author name on my, you know, little table, but anyway. The author is Shauna Lawless and this is gonna come out on the 1st of September. This is another historical fantasy set in 10th century Ireland. And yeah, I don't know much more about it, but I don't care because I really love historical fantasy set in Ireland. So, you know, I haven't read one in a while and I'm very excited to get to this. Also, this is another one where the cover is just so gorgeous that I'm like, you know what? I want it. Then we have another Greek myth retelling and that is Ithaca by Claire North which comes out on the 8th of September and as the name suggests this is I believe gonna follow Penelope who was Odysseus wife within you know Greek mythology and yeah gonna be very interested to see what this take is once again. Next I have a novella that I basically just put down because I like the title and I like the cover and that is Flowers for the Sea by Zin E. Rockland which comes out on the 19th of October so we're already in October right now because I'm kind of really bad at keeping up with uh, what books are gonna come out in the second half of the year so yeah that's that. But yeah, Flowers for the Sea, it's a novella. Because of that, I'm not really looking into what it is about, but I also believe it's published by Tor.com. Yeah, Tor.com, so yeah. Tor.com just publishes some great novellas, so I trust them that I'm gonna enjoy this one as well. And then we have another novella that I am very excited for, and that is Into the Riverlands by Ni Wu, which comes out on the 25th of October. And this is the third novella in the Singing Hills cycle, which is one of my favorite novella series. It's one of the only novella series I read. The only novella series, to be honest. And yeah, you all know Ni Wu is one of my favorite authors of all time by now, and I absolutely love her writing, so 
very excited for this one. Then I have A Restless Truth by Freya Maske, which comes out on the 1st of November. This is the sequel to, what is it called, A Marvelous Light? Uh, I don't remember what the series is called exactly, but this is also LGBT historical fantasy following kind of magicians, like a hidden magical world within the English government or the British government. And it's set, I believe, in the 19th century, if I remember correctly. Then we have Chain of Thorns by Cassandra Clare, which also comes out on the 1st of November, and which obviously is the third and last book in the Last Hour series, which is by now her fourth series within the... Or fifth series, depending on how you count it, within the Shadowhunter Chronicles. And yeah, very excited to get to it. Next, I have an anthology, which is Africa Risen, which comes out on the 8th of November. This one I'm very excited for because this is an anthology by African authors as well as authors from the African diaspora. Uh, speculative fiction, obviously, <laughs> because I'm me. Uh, and yeah, I'm just very excited to get to this and hopefully I'll get to discover some new authors that I'm gonna keep my eye out for. Then I have Heart of the Sun Warrior by Su Lin Tan, which comes out on the 10th of November. This one is the sequel to, uh, what's it called? I forgot what it's called, Daughter of the Moon Goddess, which I read at the beginning of the year. I read it back in April, actually, so not quite the beginning of the year. Uh, and this is a retelling, well, it's an adult high fantasy inspired by the myth of Chang Yi, who is the moon goddess, and we follow the daughter of the moon goddess as she tries to save her mother. This is the sequel, very excited for this one. And that was actually it. I still have The Lost Metal on here by Brandon Sanderson, which is the last book in the Wax and Wayne series, but to be honest, I'm not gonna get it as soon as it comes out, because I wanna get it secondhand. I talked about that in a recent video, um, but yeah, I don't want to buy Brandon Sanderson anymore. So yeah, I don't have any releases for December that I'm excited for apparently, and that's it. Also, my battery is blinking, so I'm just gonna wrap this up very quickly now. If you have any thoughts on any of the books I mentioned, leave them in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, maybe think about giving me a thumbs up and also maybe subscribing. All the links to my social media as well as to my book club of Queens, Witches and Valkyries, where I read one adult high fantasy book written by a woman or genderqueer person per month. We will left the link down below as well. And with all of that said, I hope I'll see you soon. Bye!